All right, we start our endorsements unveiling on the north side of town with wards four and five. And here to help us introduce the endorsees for those two wards is one of our volunteers, Sandra Samuels. She is a mother of three and a proud north sider for 24 years. She's a nonprofit executive and along with her husband, Don Samuels, she's involved in many causes that advocate for racial equity, justice and opportunities. Sandra, thank you for being here tonight. Oh, absolutely, Bill. I, I wouldn't be anywhere else. This is exciting. Thank you very much. We're happy to have you here. And so let's start with ward number four. And there we have uh, three candidates running. However, we're only endorsing two. Who's our second choice? Becca Thompson. And shall I just jump in telling you about Becca? Give us a couple of quick highlights about how she right. made the two choice. So, so we really did like Becca. Becca's a longtime Northside resident. You know, she's a single mom. She's in the race out of concern for our city's youth. She has a she has a son. And Becca says that defunders are taking an extreme route. They're pushing for a utopia that doesn't exist. She feels as though crime will worsen, uh, drive people out. And who's going to pay for this utopia when everyone leaves? We believe that Rebecca has the rights. That Becca has the right stance and that's why she's our number two which brings us to our top choice who's our top choice in ward number four latricia vita and let me tell you about latricia she is one of the most appealing and qualified challengers running this cycle she checks all the boxes she's a listener she's a collaborator she has the right experience she's against defunding and she demands reform she's really a larger than life personality who lights up a room brings people together which is what we need in ward four She's brilliant, caring, responsive to constituents, and would add maturity and thoughtfulness to the council. Now, Sandra, you mentioned experience. What are a couple of her experience highlights? Because you know that is so important for that next council person. Absolutely. Well, she's currently a park board commissioner and she has great train. It's a great training ground for a city council seat. She manages a multi-million dollar budget. She's secured millions in funding for Northside projects. She knows how to work with police. Plus, she's a 15 year North Point, um, uh, North Point Health and Wellness Center uh, employee focused on public health. And, in, and she's in the thick of uh, COVID vaccinations. And in, in fact, we credit her for for working with the institution to help us get in there. She has an expertise that the council will need for years ahead. Well, thank you, Sandra. Now, noted uh, not it being endorsed in this reward is the incumbent, Felipe uh, Cunningham. Uh, as you know, he's an avowed defender. He has proven to be a divisive factor on the council and in our city. Uh, we think uh, Le Latricia Vito is a superior choice and our number one choice in ward number four. And now we go to ward number five, where similarly here, we have an incumbent that we're not endorsing, and that's Jeremiah Ellison, another fellow who is hell-bent on defunding and abolishing the police, not smart, not mature judgment, and that is not the kind of individual we need leading our city. We had several candidates in this ward. We picked three to endorse. Who's our third choice? Our third choice is Elijah Norris Holiday. And let me tell you about Elijah. He is an impress he's impressive at 25. He's poised. He's a stirring speaker on the campaign trail. He has a master's in public administration, a good grasp on the top issues. Uh, he's into public safety, of course. Um, and he makes a powerful case for reform, but also for more police, a sufficient amount of police. Um, he also is concerned about and will work on jobs and job training for youth and so on. And, you know, he's made some mistakes uh, in his youth, but he's now giving back to community. And we believe he'll bring the voice of the next generation uh, to the campaign and potentially turn out more youth, which is what we all want. I'll tell you this, Sandra, we interviewed two dozen candidates during this process. Without a doubt, the most eloquent, the most poised, the most confident when he spoke about the issues, believe it or not, was this young man of 25. I think he's someone to keep an eye on no matter what happens in this year's election. Who's our number two choice according to your volunteer panel? Our number two choice is Victor Martinez. And Victor is a longtime Northside resident. He's a pastor at, no at Next Generation Church. And he hopes that his pastor's role will help him serve as a community bridge in terms of consistency census and action. And he's really um, leaning on his difficult childhood to inform policies on youth, on jobs, on public safety. He has a compelling narrative and he wants the city to inv 
invest more in youth and programming and resources, wants to create jobs along West Broadway corridor. He's kind, he's compassionate, and he is a tenacious bulldog. Victor has talked to everybody and, uh, and he really will outwork I think any candidate across the city. <laughs> I will tell you this. I remember one story about Victor growing up. He did come up from a poor family. He would go dumpster diving for toys and food in order to raise money for his family. That's the kind of work ethic and the type of hard scrabble background that this gentleman comes from. He really would speak for the voice of Ward 5. But who's our number one choice in Ward 5? So our number one choice in Ward 5 is Kathy Spann. And Kathy is um, the current executive director of Jordan Area Community Council. And in addition to that, with her other leadership roles, Kathy has a 25 year proven track record as a community le leader who listens to her neighbors, collaborates with city officials, including police, and gets things done. Kathy is the only candidate who will be ready to go on day one because she knows the ward inside out. And she, you know, she served as a city council uh, policy aide. So she knows how government works. And she has a lot of ideas though about how it can work better in the areas of public safety, housing, and jobs. Sandra, it's a pretty safe bet. If you live on the north side, you've heard the name Kathy Spahn. But in other parts of town, maybe not so, until you say she's the lady who led the lawsuit against the city because we didn't have enough cops on the street. And they'll say, oh, she's the one? Count me in. I'm behind Kathy Spahn. Now, she's almost been a de facto council member in Ward 5 anyway. She gets calls all types of all types of calls all times of the day. Tell us a little bit about her. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, and I live in this ward, Bill. And what we know is that when you want to get something done, you call Kathy. And what I would add, and I know this firsthand, when you want someone with courage, because she not only brought the lawsuit, she was the first person in the city of Minneapolis to say, I, we got to do more. She brought the lawsuit. Others joined, like myself, and she had courage. She was willing to stand alone because she wants to protect the neighbors while working on reform. And so she's the candidate that we chose. So there you have it in ward number five, our first choice, Kathy Spahn, our second, Pastor Victor Martinez, and our third choice, Elijah Norris Holiday. Sandra, thank you to you and your panel. Absolutely, you're welcome. Well, from the north side, we now go downtown and to the outskirts of downtown, wards seven and three, and a perfect bridge to get us there, Jay Ettinger, another one of our volunteer panelists. And Jay, you, of course, are a big supporter of the North Side uh, Boxing Club for Youth, but of course you live in downtown and you have some very um, specific business interests there as well. So you're the perfect person to bridge us from north to this area. And as we go to ward number seven, three candidates running. However, the third candidate we're not endorsing, and that's a gentleman by the name of Nick Kaur, who's the funder and as you know we do not endorse the funding candidates that leaves us two others who's our second choice in ward number seven Thanks, Bill. Thanks, so our second choice in Ward 7 uh, is Tekken Zia Aida, and just a fascinating candidate. His, his backstory and background are fascinating. He uh, was adopted from Columbia and uh, was adopted by a family in the Forest Lake area. He's been in Minneapolis now for the last couple of decades. And, he, you know, he's, he's got a view through a few different lenses. The first, you know, he's a member of our LBGTQ community, uh, our BIPOC community and uh, being Afro-Latino, I think it just adds to the diversity that we all would like to see in our council. Uh, also, he's a Humphrey Fellow. So he's got a really interesting educational background and also a former business owner. He, uh, he owned and managed a modeling and talent agency for about 23 years. And through that, uh, started something called Citywide Artists, which was a community engagement platform for artists throughout the city. Um, he also entered the election in late in 2007 17 into the Ward 7 election, but was late to the game. And it sounds like that's you know probably why he didn't have a lot of steam uh, as others had started earlier. Well, you mentioned Humphrey Fellow, and of course, he did a lot of his studies on police reform. He's taken a very deep interest in that whole relationship between the community and policing. So he does bring a French perspective. But in Ward 1, I think most of us would agree there is a slam dunk number one choice. Why don't you talk to us about your number one selection? So so Lisa Goodman, who served seven terms on our city council, and uh, and Lisa herself jokes that she used to be considered kind of the, the socialist of, of in, this, in the city council uh, chambers. 
and is now kind of moved towards the middle as the city itself is moved to the left. Uh, Lisa provides a really pragmatic and common sense approach to politics in Minneapolis. Lisa is very approachable. Uh, I've watched Lisa recently on a Zoom call with you know 30 or 40 other business owners in the uptown area, which is not even her ward. It's it's next to her ward. But I watched as our city council president uh, complained about how much she had on her plate and that she couldn't help with all of our needs. And Lisa Goodman stepped up and said, "Hey, I'll take whatever you need off your plate and help you with that." So I've seen that she's a she's a leader uh, and a team player. And like I said, she's the one that offers one of the few people uh, in City Hall that offers us some common sense in the city. Well, she's been elected seven times now. No surprise. She's had some major league accomplishments to justify. Maybe rattle off some of those big league she accomplishments. Has. Yes, she has. She's been involved with uh, major projects, including the uh, with downtown business and downtown living. A uh, sample of those would be the uh, the convention center expansion, uh, the new town, the newer downtown central library, Target Center renovation, the new Nicollet Mall, fundraising and building of Gold Medal Park, and the new park, uh, the new PV Park Plaza. Uh, She's just a powerhouse and has been for years and uh, someone that we support very strongly. So in ward number seven, our second choice, Tech and Z Ida, and Lisa Goodman is choice number one, and we have no third choice. Okay, Jay, we head out east now to downtown, controversial and very uh, much followed ward because this is where the incumbent Steve Fletcher lives. And of course, he is not necessarily uh, well liked by everyone in his ward. We're not endorsing him. Right. And that's, you know, listen, that Steve Fletcher's uh, probably my motivation for being here tonight. Uh, I've lived in his ward uh, for the, the three and a half years that he served this ward. Uh, I, I've, I've known Steve. I've met with him. Uh, I've had coffee with him. I've had lunch with him. And, you know, I've, I, I always say to people, we live in a world right now of people that are really good at identifying problems. But we're not living in a world where people are good at, at solving problems. Well, we've got a gentleman here, in my opinion, that's not even good at identifying the problem. Uh, and when you when you have someone that doesn't even acknowledge a problem and it's right in front of their face, to me, that's very scary. And, and then, like I said, that's why I'm here tonight to try to help, because we've got two excellent candidates uh, to replace him this this upcoming winter. We do. And of course, I want to remind the audience that Jay is speaking on behalf of an entire volunteer panel, which interviewed all of these individuals. It was not Jay by himself making these kinds of conclusions. So, Jay, you have two solid candidates. Who's your number two in Ward 3? So our number two candidate is someone that I've gotten to know over the last few weeks during this process, a gentleman by the name of Merv Moorhead. Uh, Merv is a really impressive gentleman. He comes out as he's an executive, currently an executive uh, with General Mills. And, you know, considering making this run and sacrificing his corporate career to serve the city and serve all of us. And I think Merv's super impressive, very polished. Uh, I've had people from General Mills reach out to me in the last few days that work for Merv and with Merv. Uh, that have reached out to let me know how highly they think of him and what an effective leader he is. And he's exactly the kind of person I would think we need in, in the city hall chamber is someone who's really good at getting things done. And well, we know that he's very active in the downtown Minneapolis Neighborhood Association. He was co-chair of the Public Safety Task Force. So he's gotten to go to get very, uh, very nuanced and very much of an expert on public safety issues, particularly downtown. One more thing, an observation that volunteers had about Merv and Jay, and you'll probably agree with this. When you listen to Merv talk, you say to yourself, give this guy two or three years in government and he would be capable of running for mayor. He is that sharp. He is that polished. And he is that much of a people person. Person who focuses on helping people win rather than helping people further an argument down and down the road. No doubt. Who's our number one choice? Number one choice is Michael Rainville. And, and Michael is, you know, is from Minneapolis. Uh, you know, he, he was raised in Minneapolis, the northeast side of the river. He, um, you know, Michael worked for Meet Minneapolis for years. He, he knows all the players in, in, in the city, in the North Loop, in the north, in northeast Minneapolis specifically. He's, he's accomplished some things on his own as well, too. He was very responsible uh, for the, uh, the, the substation, the police substation built over on University in East Hennepin years ago. 
when that commercial development went into place. And, you know, he's he was really impressive in our interview. I've known Michael for a couple of years now, and I've got to say, uh, when we interviewed him, he really came with his A game. And he and, and the thing I want to say about both Michael and Merv that really struck a nerve with me in a, in a, in a really positive way was the third ward is not necessarily a ward where we've got a lot of poverty and um, and people that are less fortunate in our that in which we do throughout our city. Both these gentlemen brought up the inequities that we have in our city and recognize the inequities we have in other wards and, and stress the importance of fixing those inequities and fixing those inequities will also help with the relationship with public safety and the police uh, department. And I was really impressed that both of these gentlemen uh, pointed that out, even though it's not necessarily right in their backyard. Excellent point. One more thing that the volunteers noted, and that is that uh, public safety is by far the number one concern on most people's minds today. And uh, Mike, in his position, really had the um, responsibility of coordinating constantly with all of the city hall departments and the Minneapolis police for things like the Super Bowl, the Final Four, things, big events that really required an orchestration throughout the city. So this guy knows who to call, when to call them, where everything's buried, and he would not need much uh, uh, um, orientation if you will, to find his office and to get running on that job from day one. Yep. And one more thing I'd say too, Bill, when it comes to this race is ranked choice voting played a, a significant role in how, uh, how our incumbent was elected. And, and I think the fact that we have two excellent candidates with ranked choice voting, it's really important that we rank these gentlemen one and two, and we don't even include the incumbent as, as an option whatsoever. All right. Thank you, Jay. And that wraps up ward number three. Okay, now let's take you to Northeast Minneapolis and a look at Ward 1, followed by Ward number 2. In Ward number 1, the incumbent is Kevin Reich. He is being challenged by two individuals to his left. But when you look at the options, you quickly conclude Kevin Reich really is the right choice and the only choice for that ward. He is well connected to the neighborhoods in that ward. He is known. He is trusted. He is given high grades for being responsive and for delivering good constituent service. On the public safety front, he understands the urgent need for police reform and accountability and is one of the first in line to work with the chief and the mayor to get that done. However, he does balance that movement with the need to keep an adequate number of beat patrols active in the Northeast Minneapolis neighborhoods, and he's pretty adamant on that as well. This is a fellow who's not very flashy. Uh, he doesn't grab for the spotlight like some of his colleagues, but he is solid, smart, and steady. He was first elected in 2009, and his constituents keep sending him back again, again, and again, and they probably should do it again here in 2021. Ward one will win, and the city will win if they reelect Kevin Reich from ward number one. Now, when we move to ward number two, in contrast, uh, that's not an easy choice in ward number two. In fact, you could argue there is no choice in ward number two. Certainly not the incumbent, Camp Gordon, whose radical and abolitionist ideology threatens to take our city over the cliff. Now, there are two candidates who do appear to be less radical, Tom Anderson and Yuza Arab, but both declined to pursue our endorsement, apparently acknowledging the need for more police publicly in plain, simple language, is not a smart political move in Ward Number 2. So until a better option comes along, if a better option comes along, we are not endorsing a Number 2. That is the only ward in which we're taking a pass. Okay, we now move west of Ward Number 2 to Ward Number 6, right smack in the middle of Minneapolis, neighborhoods such as Cedar Riverside, Elliott Park, and Phillip West. And to talk a little bit more about that ward, here is our co-founder from Operation Safety Now, Jim Galvan. Jim, welcome to the program. Hi, Bill. Thanks for having me. Well, of course. And talk to us about what's going on in Ward Number 6. Um, Jamal Osman is the only uh, person running for Ward 6 currently right now, and he's our clear choice uh, for that ward. Um, he joined the council last summer, has adamantly stood with his constituents in demanding more but, and not fewer police. Yes, he supports reform and alternative services like mental health teams, but he wants it in partnership with fully staffed departments, police department. And beyond public safety, what are the other issues that are driving his candidacy? Um, he he adamantly opposes uh, the amendment for calling it for a new public service department. Um, and beyond that, uh, you know, beyond public safety, his two other topic priorities are fighting the opiate, opiate epidemic and addressing the lack of affordable housing and affordable rents. Uh, right now, he's running unchallenged. But even if others enter the race, Osman is proving he is the best choice for Ward 6. 
Okay, thank you very much, Jim. And that's it for Ward 6. Okay, we're now going to move a little bit further south to Ward Number 9, which is in the central portion of Minneapolis as well. And there's where you'll find neighborhoods such as Corcoran, Longfellow, and Powderhorn Park. And there to bring us up to speed on where our endorsements stand is our lead volunteer, Janet Skidmore, who is a longtime homeowner and landlord in that ward, as well as an artist. Janet, thank you for being on our program. Thanks for having me. So this is an interesting situation. We have an incumbent who is not running again. That's Alondra Cano. And so as a result, we've got six candidates vying for her seat in this ward. Four of them, however, are the funders are off on the left-hand side where we, they would not uh, meet our criteria anyway. So that leaves a couple of sensible choices for most people in Ward 9. Talk to us about who is our number two choice. Well, our number two place is A.J. Flowers. He was born and raised in the Ninth Ward. He still has a grandma living here. Um, he and his wife are raising two young daughters in the ward. Um, and Mr. Flowers embraces both sides of the police issue. He is the nephew of Lisa Clemens, who is a former cop. But he's also the son of Al Flowers, who is a well-known critic of the police. Um, he respects Chief Arredondo's vision for getting rid of the bad cops and putting the focus on community policing. He also feels that the black community as a whole does not necessarily support defunding the police, but rather wants accountability from the police. And you mentioned his aunt, Lisa Clements, who has to be one of the most respected uh, former officers on that police force. She lends some instant credibility to uh, this candidacy. Uh, tell us a little bit more about his non-public safety positions. Yes, um, he is um, interested in having community input into the redevelopment along Lake Street. He's for decriminalizing nonviolent crimes, and he's interested in providing jobs and apprenticeship apprenticeship programs uh, in the skilled trades for, for young offenders. Okay, so that's A.J. Flowers Jr., uh, our number two choice, an impressionable young guy. Who's our number one choice? Yeah, number one was Mickey Moore. Um, now, Mickey is for tough reforms for the police, but he also actually believes that we need more police than are in the budget now, and he's committed to finding ways to pay for them. Um, most of all, he has a very strong business background. He knows how to create jobs. He fought long and hard against city and state government to open the braid, the braid factory, which is a minority business uh, in South Minneapolis. And it's become extremely successful with some 300,000 clients. And I have to say that, um, you know, it, it, w our choice between Mickey and AJ um, was very, very close. You know, we, we, I think we flipped a, a, a couple times of who would be number one and who would be number two. Mostly we feel like either of these two guys would be great on the city council. Yeah, that's very, very well pointed out. And by the way, just to clarify, so that people don't think Mickey Moore is more of a super wizard than you already made him out to be. Those 300,000 clients, of course, are over the course of 25 years. Um, if he had a salon now with 300,000 uh, clients, he, he would be a millionaire retired somewhere right, right. Have to work for anything. But he is he's got a great energy. Um, he's got some wonderful authenticity about him and he's got a very engaging style. He has a chance to really shake up the race in this ward. He's outspoken on public safety, as you pointed out. And so it's going to be a good example of how ranked choice works. This is a ward where you really only have two logical choices, making more number one, Al Flowers Jr. number two, or vice versa, and you leave the third slot blank. That is your best way to flip the city council in a direction that's more sensible, bringing safety and sanity back to our community. Janet, thank you very much for your efforts. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to move a little bit now further west toward 10, the area around the lakes in South Minneapolis. And here to represent volunteers for that part of town, Melissa Ellering, who's been a resident in Minneapolis for 11 years. Welcome, Melissa. Hi, Bill. It's great to be here. Well, thank you for being here. Now, this is among the most watched wards. This is where the notorious defunder Lisa Bender has been serving on the city council from. There are seven candidates vying to replace her since she's not running for re-election. And they span an ideology all the way from being practical moderates to off the rail um, utopians. Now, with that said, you had to pick or you had the option of picking three. And I think you did pick three recommendations in this ward. Let's start with your third choice, please. 
Our third choice is Alicia Gibson. She's incredibly intelligent. She's a law school grad, doctorate in literature, and clearly understands the issues, public safety, housing, and racial equity. She is strong and sensible on public safety. So she's against defunding and against against the proposed safety amendments that could leave us with fewer police. She calls them disruptive and delusional. She describes herself as progressive, but goes out of her way to say she's no Lisa Bender. And she'll probably earn some votes just on that point alone. But now who's your second choice? Our second choice is David Wheeler. Uh, he is the ideal candidate in many respects. 10 years on the Minneapolis Board of Estimate and Taxation. So he has budgeting expertise that very few others would have. Um, former city council member in Duluth. And his priorities are spot on. He yeah, fixed the police department, hire more cops, and help businesses rebuild, especially along Lake Street and downtown. Uh, he's active in the faith community. So he has a calm and respectful demeanor. And that would help lower the temperature in city council chambers. And you know, Melissa, his campaign slogan is experience, tested, and trusted. And again, he's no Lisa Bender. So I think he can get some points on that one too. Who's your first choice? Our first choice is Chris Parsons. There's a lot to like about Chris. Uh, first responder, he's been a 20, uh, for 20 years, he's been a firefighter, rank of captain eventually in that role and lives public safety every day. Um, he's a leader elected by 400 of, uh, member local union and a 2000 member uh, state federation. And he's won um, national awards for his work. Uh, he's a hometown guy, born and raised here, attended public school, family rented growing up, really a uh, regular guy facing the same hardships as many of us. And he has first firsthand experience with budgeting, policymaking, and legislative process. So he can really hit the ground running. So if you had to, in a, in a summary, in a nutshell, what are, what are the reasons why he came out to be your number one choice? Sure. Uh, public safety career and commitment to add officers, restore beat patrols, and he'll really be a great partner for the chief to get reform moving. Uh, he has priorities for youth programming and housing that will help poor families build wealth. And he's an approachable guy, uh, doesn't really want the spotlight, just wants to help us win. Um, and I loved it when he said that Ward 10 doesn't need an activist, it needs an advocate. Well, he said one more thing, too, during his interview with the volunteer panel, when they asked him why he's running, he said, um, well, um, he's here running because he's here to save us. And who better than a firefighter to save us? And that's Chris Parsons, our number one choice in ward number 10. Thank you very much, Melissa. Thank you. OK, we now move to the southwest part of Minneapolis, wards 13 and 11. And here to help us uh, get a sense of how things are going in those two races is our lead volunteer, Colleen Kepler. Colleen is an East Coast transplant and a proud resident of Minneapolis for 30 years. She's a sales executive with a busy family of five. Colleen, welcome to the program. Thanks, Phil. Great to be here. Well, thank you. Now, in Ward 13, frankly, there's not too much suspense. Talk to us a little bit about what's going on there. Absolutely. So Lene Palmisano is the clear and only choice in Ward 13. Um, when it comes to public safety, she aligns with us 100 percent. She refused to take the defund pledge. She is consistently a rock of resistance against the radicals looking to defund or abolish the police. She really stands her ground in advocating for a balanced approach to public safety. She works extremely well with the chief. She helped pass reform measures and she supports new alternative emergency responses. She draws the line at cutting police staffing to dangerously low levels. So that is all good. Um, she's currently leading the fight to defeat the proposed amendment for a new public safety department. You know, also worth noting about Lene is that she does an incredible job as the chair of the budget committee. She knows her numbers inside out. She has a strong record pushing legislation to fight economic disparities and champion environmental causes. I guess the best way the, the, that I would summarize Lene Palmisano is a conversation I had with a very respected individual who knows politics inside out in this in this uh, community. And when you mentioned Lene's name, the first response was, if she's running for mayor, I'll be the first in line to write her a check. So she's very well respected within the council and out in her community as well. So Lene um, is the number one choice there. Colleen, why don't you take us now to Ward 11 and give us a situation there. We know that the incumbent, Jeremy Schrader, is not someone that we are likely to endorse whatsoever. He's an ardent and notorious defunder, woefully out of step with the majority of people in his ward. So uh, defunding the police is not what that community wants to hear out of their representative. Fortunately, they do have two strong alternatives. Talk to us about your second and your first choice in Ward 11. 
Sure, Bill. So, um, second choice, we have Emily Kosky, and she comes from a family of public service. Her dad, Al Hofstead, uh, was a two-term mayor in Minneapolis, um, but she's leaving her own imprint um, via involvement with schools, the community council, um, Habitat for Humanity, and other nonprofit work. She really brings much needed skills and perspective as a small business owner, um, especially now when businesses will need help recovering and adding jobs in a post COVID economy. You know, you mentioned small business. She also spent a few years at Target Corporation. So she's got both sides of the equation there, owning her own business and knowing those struggles, but also knowing how corporations work and what they're thinking in terms of how they can support their communities locally as well. So where does she stand on public safety? Well, she's calling for a new way forward to end systemic racism, but makes clear that police defunding or abolishing is not an option. Um, one more noteworthy thing about her, she puts a lot of emphasis on listening and staying engaged with the community, which is really a refreshing change versus the incumbent Schrader, um, who's viewed as out of touch with his constituents. Well, she's a pretty impressive individual. And if she's number two, then I think the first choice must be equally or better in terms of impressiveness. Who's your number one choice? Well, let me tell you about our number one choice, Dylan Gerna. And public safety is this election's number one issue. And no challenger has more experience in this area. He works in Hennepin County's Sheriff's Office under the respective Sheriff David Hutchinson. He oversees a portfolio of community safety programs, um, including Narcan training, restorative justice, and National Night Out. Um, he also has a strong business background across a variety of industries um, and has experience managing large budgets. So no surprise, his top priorities are public safety and helping small businesses rebound from the effects of COVID-19. Thank you, Colleen. I know that uh, most of the, if not all of the volunteers who had the chance to interact with him really did come across uh, with some great impressions about his personality. To meet him is to like him. He's poised, he's articulate, he's humbled. And uh, he figures to be, very, frankly, a very strong ally of Police Chief Arredondo, given his tenure with the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office. And that certainly would be a 180 degree turn from the incumbent sitting in that seat today. One last thing about Ward 11, this is where ranked choice voting really comes into to play. So important for folks to vote Dylan first, Emily second, or vice versa, but not to put anybody else in that third slot. Just fill out the first two, leave the third blank um, open, and you're off to making change for our community and for Ward 11. Colleen, thank you for your time and for your volunteering, and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you. All right, we're going to conclude our tour in the southeast portion of Minneapolis in Ward 12. That's where the incumbent Andrew Johnson is being challenged by three individuals for his reelection campaign. Now, Mr. Johnson did decline to interview with Operation Safety Now for our endorsement. Of course, he's the gentleman who stood on that powder horn stage along with eight of his colleagues vowing to defund and abolish the police department and put our safety at risk. So it's unlikely that we would have been aligned on the public safety uh, position at all. But since then, he has casted some uh, some votes which further call into question his commitment to public safety with a strong police presence in addition to reform. And so from that purpose, I think it's a mutual thing that the, the uh, council person and our organization were not able to get together. However, I do want to bring in our volunteer representative from that area, Ellen Schmitz, longtime Minneapolis resident, including 25 years in Ward 12. Ellen, welcome to the program. Thanks, Phil. Good to be here. Well, we know that we have three challengers to member uh, Council Member Johnson. However, two of those are not in play at all. They're, they're not on the public safety front with a, a, a good, strong police presence. We, we cannot live in utopia with a policeless society doing kumbaya around a campfire every night. That's not the way public safety works in most large societies. So we have really one choice, and it is your first choice. Tell us what your volunteers thought, were thinking, and who is our number one choice? Yeah, Bill, there really is only one choice in Ward 12, and that's Nancy Ford. Uh, Nancy Ford is a lifelong Ward 12 resident who's active in neighborhood associations, local schools, but perhaps she's best known as the longtime owner of the repair layer down on Lake Street. Uh, they repair and consign outdoor clothing and gear. 
Nancy wants more attention focused on what she says are the two most underserved populations in the city, youth under the age of 16 and seniors over 65. She aligns with our reform position. She also wants to improve public safety by restoring neighborhoods beat, and putting beat patrols back on the, uh, in the neighborhoods and putting more focus on the revolving door that allows the criminals back onto our streets so easily. Now, Ellen, your volunteer panel was very struck by uh, Ms. Ford's uh, personality and her temperament. Can you elaborate on that? Because I know that was a factor in your decision. Oh, yeah. Nancy, she's one tough cookie. Uh, she speaks her mind, but she also knows how to listen, which is a key skill to have as a council member. She knows how to negotiate. She considers the options, but you are going to know exactly where Nancy stands on the issues because she does not mince words. And that's a, quite a contrast in style to the incumbent. So it's clear to us that Nancy would be a strong voice for Ward 12. And I know Nancy's going to be out in all the neighborhoods for meet and greet events in the near future. So you should watch out for Nancy Ford in Ward 12 neighborhoods. I'll leave our viewers with this story about Nancy. She does have a sign in her store which says, if it's broke, fix it. And that is exactly her attitude about the city council and why she's running. She thinks the city council is broken and she thinks she can use her business experience and her straightforward style, her common sense style to fix things and represent War 12 in the way that it should be represented. Thank you very much, Ellen. Thank you.